Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Pro and Hurricane HD video blog for the 10th of June 2013. Thought I would take a look at the SOI or the Southern Oscillation Index. What is that, you may ask? Well, the easiest way to explain this is the pressure difference between Tahiti and Darwin, Australia on a daily basis. It's calculated with a formula. We won't go into that today. Basically what it's showing us is the pressure pattern across the tropical Pacific. When the SOI is positive, especially strongly and consistently so, then we're typically in a La Nina or cooler than average sea surface temperature pattern in the tropical Pacific. When the SOI is consistently and rather dramatically negative, like we saw here for parts of 2012 and even into this year, then we're more in a La, or an El Nino, the warming of the tropical Pacific weather pattern. And it's those extremes, either side of your average here, which is this straight line, that we're looking for. Now, back in 2011 and 2012, we saw some pretty good spikes of positive SOI activity, and we were closer to La Nina at that point. Right now, we're in a positive phase or period of time but it's not overwhelmingly so. We're not seeing very strong positive values. Therefore, we're not in a La Nina pattern because the trade winds as a result of this strong SOI are not blowing especially strong across the tropical Pacific. And another way to look at this is how it affects the water, the ocean anomalies, the temperature anomalies. This is a cross section of the tropical Pacific from February, March, April, and May and we're looking at the surface of the ocean here and several hundred meters deep at the bottom. This side is the Eastern Pacific, this side is the Western Pacific. And if we look back at February, we can see there's a very large pool of colder than average water temperatures in the tropical Pacific. Uh, on the west side of the tropical Pacific though was a warm pool. And that has been the pattern for March and April and into May basically this has stayed in balance you don't see one action taking over over another the cold pool has basically stayed where it is it's moved around just a little bit it's grown in intensity just a little bit or it's lost some intensity we call that modifying same thing with the warm pool it's also modified only slightly it was a little bit larger in february but it's basically stayed the same size through march april and may and that shows us that it's basically in balance or a neutral pattern that we're looking at across the tropical Pacific. And we can see that, yes, there is colder than average water in the tropical Pacific here, but out in the central tropical Pacific, there's more of this balance going on. Colder water on the east side, slightly warmer water on the west side, and so you get this neutral pattern in place. And really what it all comes down to is that we're not looking at an El Nino situation where the water out here is warmer than the average, which leads to stronger than normal upper level winds usually cutting across the tropical Atlantic, especially the Caribbean. That's not going to be in place this year. In fact, it's the neutral seasons that seem to give us the most trouble. So we're really going to have to pay attention to the tropical Atlantic, especially in August, September, the peak months, because there we do have, at least now through June the 10th, warmer than average water temperatures in some areas more than a degree celsius a little bit of an area of cool down here in the western atlantic but the gulf of mexico and caribbean still running above average in most of the area and in fact in the gulf we can see what uh, the result of andrea was right there cooled off the waters just a little bit the western gulf of mexico and the central gulf still running more than a degree in some areas celsius above the average but Andrea came in through here, churned up the water, and uh, left what we call a cold wake in its, um, in its you know, path, in its trail. Kind of like a motorboat when it goes by, and you can see the wake left behind for quite a while. Same thing here with Andrea. It leaves this cold wake behind, which will soon fill in as the strong June sunshine continues to warm the ocean. Looking at the ocean heat content, that too will continue to warm with that sunshine heating. Uh, this is expanding, getting warmer. The ocean heat content, more of a measure of how much energy is in the water, where that warm water extends deeper, 
You have more ocean heat content like you see here in the Caribbean Sea. This is basically uh, just something to look at right now. Once we get to August and September, it'll really start to matter and we'll see it take up a lot more real estate than what we are seeing now. In the Atlantic Basin, not much going on at all as you'd expect in June. Strong upper level winds cutting across the deep tropics, very typical of uh, this time of year. A little area of disturbed weather in the western gulf, nothing tropical in nature. None of the global computer models indicating tropical cyclone development in the Atlantic Basin for the next several days. And if we do see anything beyond the 10 day time frame, 8 to 10 days, it would probably be around this area and not affect anywhere in the United States, I don't think. It's just not that type of pattern, but you never know. That's why we'd pay attention to it. The Eastern Pacific, likewise, for the most part, pretty calm. Just some areas of clouds down here associated with some weak surface troughing. And that is to say where the air is coming together, converging, and you get that uplift, a rising motion, convection along those weak areas of low pressure at the surface. Notice, too, the low cloud deck up here in the uh, colder waters of the eastern North Pacific you wouldn't want to go swimming out there. This is the area where the water temperatures are in the 60s and 50s. Down here is where it's warm and tropical. Quite a distinction, too. Boy, I tell you, you know, you've seen it. You get these hurricanes that will develop out here, and they head for that cold water by the steering patterns, and they just die out as that warmer water goes away, and they trail into that cold water. Um, there's no energy, and they just fade away. Maybe we'll get to see that at some point where one of these forms and heads for that colder water and it's just a swirl. It's like it just gets eaten up uh, from the bottom up. You know, the energy source is just gone. Anyway, that's it for now. Nothing else to talk about, and that's good news, right? we got plenty of hurricane season left, and we know there'll be plenty to talk about once we get to August and September, maybe even July, too. You never know. That's it for me for this Monday. Again, I'm Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow.